In this tutorial in Cyberlink Color Director, we're going to show you how to use a very important tool in order to create all kinds of effects in Color Director. It's called the Motion Tracking Mask. Let me show you how to begin to use it with some initial tips. We're going to take this clip of these five young people and drag it into our timeline so we can edit. Then I'll click on the Adjustment tab at the top. That will open the left panel. The second item from the left, the double circle with the crosshairs, is my motion tracking mask. If you click it, it'll click on and off. The most important features of the mask is I can use it to add area as a brush or erase area. The other way in which you can do that is if it's set to brush, you hold the Alt key down and it will erase. Likewise, if you have it set to erase, you hold the Alt key down and it will add. It's much like what you see in Photoshop. Then we can control the size of our brush, either on erasing or adding, by simply dragging our slider or dragging across our numbers or going up and down on our arrows. We can also adjust the feathering. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to mask out this young man. Now, one of the key things, if you're using this tool, is that the, the best kind of video to use is where your subject, whether it's a person or an object, is in sharp color contrast to everything around it with sharp edges. The green of this shirt will be very, very easy. What will be difficult will be the difficult between the hands of one person and another, the pigment is so close, or for the gal up here between the feature in her hair and the ocean behind it, which is virtually identical. We'll also have some problems between the color of the pigment here and the look of South America because it's very similar. So um, the, the kind of video you have will have a lot to do with how laborious this process will be. But to start a simple mask, I'm going to pick my brush size here and I'll simply go ahead and highlight this young man. I've got his face, I've got his shirt. We'll drag it down here and that worked out overall pretty good. Now I have to add a little bit of his right arm and a little of his left arm. So I have to make the brush pretty small here. Try not to get her hand. At least I got most of it there. So that's that's pretty good. Okay. Um, now I have to decide do I want her fingers on his shoulder or not. Uh, to make this simple I'll just leave them there. So now I have a mask. If I had a photo, I'd virtually be done. I could apply all kinds of things. I could, um, uh, and we'll get to some of the kinds of things you can do once the mask is selected. But a video is more complicated because now I have to select every frame in the video. The way I do that is I click on the second tool from the right underneath the picture. It's my motion tracking. Now this is one you'll want to click on and off quite a bit. All you have to do is use the left mouse button. So if I click it, it will start moving through the frames and all of a sudden I clicked it again to stop it because note what happened. We had his arm come into the picture and I want to make sure that's masked out. We'll click it again to start it and we'll stop it again here. Notice now we have his other arm which is not in the frame. Okay. In in the selection area. So and I'll click it again. Okay, it seems to work now. Let's see, it looks pretty good. It also actually picked up his jeans here, which I didn't expect it to do. We'll click again. Okay, now we lost his arm once more as things moved, so we'll add that. It's actually setting keyframes for us. We have a lesson on keyframes if you don't understand the concept there. And again, we have to adjust these a little bit and uh, we'll keep moving forward. We lost a little bit here of the arm again and we'll set it to keep moving. And now we have to again uh, mess with the right arm a little and we keep going. And now it didn't pick up his jeans here or it didn't pick up his arm again as it came into the, the uh, picture. Okay, we'll click again, and we still have problems with both arms. 
and we'll move forward a little bit and you can see that even when I have a lot of contrast uh, it can be a little bit complicated to move uh, over and over again I won't touch the rest of this I'll just let you see what it's guessing it, that it can do but in order to get this done perfectly what you have to do is do a lot of work I'll click on OK here if I click on the, the uh, clock tab on the left side I see the keyframes and every time I made a change here it set a keyframe so I can go ahead for each of these and make adjustments in my mask keyframe by keyframe you can actually set five different masks with five different colors uh, on the same uh, particular video clip we'll have more about that in a future tutorial but uh, you notice it's a little bit complicated to try to get the whole thing done uh, without some problems here and there and you can go frame by frame through it you can click this tool here to also track one frame at a time but if you're going to do a very detailed job of you putting applying this mask so you can apply a feature you almost have to be a frame by frame editor it's a, it can be a very very challenging process but that's how you start to create a mask now once I have the mask there's all kinds of things I could do one example of the kinds of things you could do I could take my blur and I can change my blur degree and I can blur the young man out or I can invert it and blur out all of his friends uh, that's just one example of the kind of things we can do we can change the color of his shirt we can do other things but we'll get into those applications later this lesson is designed to show you that in order to do the mask you have to be very careful and very patient otherwise you won't get the kind of final results that you're looking for in your project.